Welcome back guys to Working Aussies Homestead. My name is Josh and I wanted to give you some helpful tips today to help you order those seeds that you're planning on ordering on a budget. Alright guys, if you are new here or not new here, you probably know that we like to budget and that is the same when it comes to ordering our seeds. We like to kind of stick to a budget of uh, about a hundred bucks or so. We can go over a little bit or under a little bit, but for the most part, we don't need to spend a ton since we are just growing food for ourselves. But what does that mean about seeds? It's so easy for us to get these catalogs here. This is a Baker Creek and a Johnny Seeds and literally just open them up and see all of these beautiful different vegetables and plants and think, oh man, we are going to have fun this year and plant everything that we want to. And then next thing you know, you have spent $600 worth of seeds. Don't ask me how I know that. It might just be because I that's what I did last year. So, But if you're looking to get seeds and you want to stay on a budget, it can be really simple. Then these are the seven steps that we used in order to make sure that our budget was on point and make sure we didn't go out of that. Not saying that $600 is a bad thing. If that's what you wanna spend, then go for it. It's always good to find things that make you happy in these catalogs and buy them and plant them. And you know, ultimately you need to be happy with your garden. That being stated, if you don't wanna spend a ridiculous amount of money on seeds, there are a couple things to think about before you even open the catalog or think about it. So when we were sitting down and thinking about what we wanted to spend this year on our garden, there were a couple of things that we thought about the most. One was, what was our goal for this year? And we encourage you to think about this when you are getting ready to plan your garden. What is your goal? Do you wanna grow food for yourself and your family? Do you wanna grow food for others? Do you want a place to try new things and experiment with and maybe grow things you've never eaten before? Do you wanna grow something other than food? Maybe you wanna grow flowers or herbs. Do you want space to just maybe sit and relax? You know, maybe you've got a flower garden or a vegetable garden and then you have a bench there and all you really wanna do is have a nice place to go, sit and enjoy yourself. So there's that possibility. But if you're like us and this is only your first or second year going in, it may be something that you you really want to think about because that's going to really dictate what seeds you get and what seeds you don't get. When we had started our garden last year, it was our first real growing season and we opened up this wonderful Baker Creek catalog and basically said, okay, we're going to get stuff we like and then stuff we don't like and we're going to try it and we want to get the stuff that looks pretty and we want to get the stuff that we know um, that is different than what we normally eat and that's great and all, but at the end of it all, it kind of got overwhelming and we had like way too many varieties and way too many plants for a first year gardener, in my opinion. And I think we just easily got overwhelmed. So once you figured out your goal, the next thing you wanna do is you wanna figure out what your seed inventory is. Now, if you're starting off with no seeds, you're starting from scratch, then welcome to the club you know exactly how many seeds you need to get, which is all of them. But if you are like us and you have a big bucket of seeds, you kind of need to know what you have before you buy more. So basically just going through and figuring out which seeds you already have. So if you want to get different tomatoes this year, you want to get the same tomatoes, you know how many you already have. You want to make sure you're not getting extra summer crops or winter crops or fall crops or spring crops. You want to make sure you don't get excess because that will really mess with your budget. And then you're going to have an excess amount and then you're not even going to plant them. The other thing we decided to do when we went through our inventory was write down what worked well and what didn't what varieties we had, what we planted last year that worked well for us being beginners and for us in our climate, we wanted to make sure we were going to reuse plants that really worked well. So we had good um, outcomes with certain types of green beans that we had, certain types of kales that we had, certain types of tomatoes, and then there were some tomatoes and other things that just didn't grow well at all. Uh, straight eight cucumbers did really well, but the uh, cucumbers that we got from Baker Creek did not. And that might be on us, that might be on the climate that we are in, but at the same time, we didn't wanna spend an excess amount of time trying to figure that out this year 
this year we're focusing on just saving more of our own food so we wanted to focus on the varieties that worked well for us last year another way that might be good for you to save money and get some seeds on a budget is look for packaged seeds and i don't mean like the little small package i mean like we are getting we are using this bug out seed pack and on the back you can see all of the different varieties that there are and this actually worked out better. I priced out all of the seeds that we were getting in this pack individually and it came out to be almost double what this pack is and almost the same amount of seeds. So take that into consideration when you're getting ready to start your garden. Is a pack better than uh, buying individual seeds? Are you going to eat everything in this pack? Are you going to eat maybe three quarters of what's in this pack? Um, that could really help you save some money in the long run because think about it you've got this whole thing of seeds but most of the seeds that are in there are in this pack this is literally all you need that could save you a lot of money in the long run so to help you guys out with this we did get the sustainable uh, seed pack but I will be putting links in the description below to some other seed packs not only from them but also on Amazon that you can get your hands on and try this year and it might be even worth you spending a little extra money to try uh, these seed packs out and see how you like them because in the long run they might work better for you than buying individual seed packets. The fourth thing that we ended up using when we were budgeting for our seeds is we took advantage of some individuals in the area that were doing some seed swaps and swapping some of our seeds with their seeds. So we'll have some loofah coming in. We'll have some flowers coming in. We actually have some seeds that we got from a friend in Missouri. So it's really cool to have a seed swap because you're basically putting things in your garden from other states, your friends, your families. Um, basically what they worked hard for is now going to be growing in your garden and so like we're super excited about that because we're going to be having like I said some seeds from Missouri from a good friend of ours who uh, sent it to us for Christmas and so we'll have things growing in our garden that she worked very hard to save and then we will do the same as well and that means something that's part of this whole garden community that we are a part of and it makes it just that much more enjoyable just like the friends that we have close by who save seeds from us they worked extremely hard for that and they are part of our community it is nice that we'll be having their hard work growing in our garden just like they'll be having ours grow in theirs so as far as seed swaps go you can go um look on Facebook groups, you can go possibly look on Instagram and see if there are seed swaps near you or small groups near you that are swapping seeds out. If you can't find a seed swap, then I highly recommend that you go and start one with your friends and family. You only need three to five people. And if you guys are growing different varieties, you can kind of seed swaps in and you can swap seeds in and out and it'll start bringing you together as a community. So you guys get out there and check out that. That is a wonderful way to save a little bit of money on your seeds this year. So the next thing you can do to save a little money on seeds is you can save your own. So we have this Johnny's Seeds holder and I literally just saved some pea seeds from our garden from last year, if you can see them. And so they will go in our garden this coming up here and they are a Baker Creek variety, but they were just ones that we had planted last year and I was able to save them. And so you can do that with any plant that you want, um, but I would recommend doing them with a seed that you really, really like and a seed that you really, really enjoy eating. I would also recommend only doing it with maybe three to five different plants if you're just starting out. We felt a little overwhelmed our first year. We did it in the spring and Guys, I did not have any idea how many kale seeds we would have from saving our own kale seeds. Like, it was a ton of seeds. So, pick three or five different varieties, um, or three or five different plants, sorry, and save some seeds. It'll help you in the long run. You can use those seeds over and over and over again, and those are seeds you don't have to buy next year. So the last thing that we are going to talk about is keeping new variety seeds to a minimum of three to five each growing season. And what I mean by new seeds is, guys, I totally understand. You go into the thing, you go into the catalog, 
you look at all the different corn and you're like, I'm gonna grow all of the corn or I'm gonna grow all of the kale and collards. I'm gonna grow all of the tomatoes. Those are probably the worst. And they're gonna be all the different colors and all the different varieties. And it's gonna be wonderful. And then come the middle part of summer, your garden has been overgrown because you didn't have time to keep up with it. You didn't like them. They were pretty, they made you feel good. Um, but that was about it. Done, been there, done that too. So keep new varieties to three to five. Um, this year I'm going to be doing a couple of different kales, a couple of different peas. Um, we're only going to be doing two types of tomatoes and focusing on one last year that we really liked that we didn't really get enough time to spend on pruning it and making sure it was healthy and happy and it just didn't really work well because we had so many different varieties that we were trying to work on at one time. So keep those down to three to five. That's less seeds you have to buy. And you know what? At the end of the day, you'll be happy that you have food on the table. You'll be happy with the varieties that you started because they're gonna be so abundant because you had the time to work on them and you saved money because you didn't have 20 different varieties growing in the garden. <laughs> Ultimately, you guys, as you're buying your seeds, make sure you're buying stuff that you actually are interested in, actually bring you joy to grow, and actually enjoy eating, and actually want to try. Because at the end of the day, if it doesn't pop up because you weren't interested in it, then that's the biggest waste of your budget for seeds that you could possibly do. At the end of the day, you want to have fun with this. You want to have joy from growing the different foods. All right, you guys, I hope that helped out a bit with your budget and buying seeds this year. If you haven't already gotten your seeds, I encourage you to go ahead and get started and purchase those seeds. You never know what's going to happen, and last year is a prime example that sometimes it might not be a good idea to wait for seeds. I will leave a link in the description below to our seed packets and the other ones that we are going to um, share with you guys. And then also I will leave links in the description below about the places that we got our seeds and some other items that we are going to be using next year that you might be interested in. So thank you guys for stopping by today. And if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, guys, we will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.